In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. I call to you all day long, have mercy on me, O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call to you. Welcome to Mass this morning, everybody, and welcome to our Bishop Norman. Thank you for coming, and we pray this Mass for our parish, congregation, and those who are being confirmed today. And so, my brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Let us think of the times when we prefer our own way to God's. For the times when we have deliberately ignored what God has been saying to us through other people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us, Lord, for the occasions on which we've ignored the wishes and needs of others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Forgive us, Lord, when we refuse to accept other people for what they are. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that God will increase our faith and bring to perfection the gifts his gifts. Almighty God, every good thing comes from you. Fill our hearts with love for you, increase our faith, and by your constant care, protect the good you give us. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. In the first reading in the book of Jeremiah, <clears throat> God has called Jeremiah <clears throat> to preach a message of destruction to the people. Jeremiah is torn within himself. Part of him wants no more dealing with God, yet he can't turn away from the fire burning within his heart. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me, you were the stronger. I am a daily laughing stock, everyone's butt. Each time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word the Lord has meant for me, insult, derision, all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him, I will not speak in his name anymore. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. This is the word of the Lord. I am to be God. The response to the psalm is, For you my Lord is thirsty. My soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God. For you I long, for my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. In you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. For you, my soul, is thirsting, O Lord, my God. For you have been my help in the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. 
In the second reading, in the letter to the Romans, St. Paul urges his readers to open their minds and hearts to the will of God. That is the acceptable offering. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him, I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be with God. Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our minds so we can see what heaven is called whole for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes. To be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then taking the sign, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This has not happened to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, and anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then would a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what is a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in glory of his Father of his age. When he does, he'll reward each one according to his behavior. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise God's way, but man's way, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In modern times, the most successful advertising logo there has ever been is, would you believe it, from a sports company. It's Nike. And if you remember, Nike's um, symbol, or logo, or advertising sign, is a tick. Now, when we're all at school, and when we get our home back, our homework back, what did we look for? We looked in our books to see whether there were any ticks. And when we got the ticks rather than the crosses, we felt quite pleased with ourselves. We had a good feel factor. That's why Nike, 
uh, was a brilliant moment of genius, whoever decided that that was to be their logo. But when it comes to Christianity, we actually have the most successful logo or advertising sign there has ever been in the whole history of the world, because everybody across the whole planet knows that those two lines, uh, um, a vertical and a lateral, that make of the cross are a sign of Christianity. But it wasn't true that that happened immediately after Jesus died on the cross and then came back from the dead and ascended into heaven. When Jesus died on the cross, that was the most shameful way it was possible to die. It's one of the worst forms of death that human beings have ever created. And the Romans, remember that the height of the Roman Empire, one of the most cruel empires there's ever been, they devised the cross as the means of death for criminals and very lowly people. So to die on the cross was a very, very shameful thing to happen to you. And when, we, when the archaeologists and historians and whatever <coughs> have actually gone into the, the time, the, the mindset of the early church, particularly from lots of the symbols that they found in the catacombs, those burial chambers of the early Christians, they found in the very first century or more of the church's history, there are no crosses. Instead, you've got beautiful images of Jesus uh, as a shepherd with a, with a lamb on his shoulder. You've got images, little signs of anchors and, and fish and all kinds of other things, but not the cross. Because they thought that the cross was so shameful that no one could possibly follow a leader who had died such a terrible death. And so what we've got to remember is when Jesus um, lived his earthly life and he was with his disciples and he was teaching round the shores of the Sea of Galilee, we mustn't get into our heads that when he died and rose again, ascended to heaven, that all the scales fell off everybody's uh, eyes and that that group of followers who'd been with him suddenly understood everything. They didn't. It took ages Generations, in fact, for the full import or the full understanding of the words of Jesus to begin to make sense and for them to understand. If you remember, um, those very first, those disciples, and that, 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 those um, followers of Jesus who were very close to him, at first, they didn't write anything down at all because they thought the end of the world was coming within a matter of months or a few years and they wouldn't need to. And it was only when they thought they'd start forgetting things that they began in those first 30 years after uh, our Lord's uh, ascension into heaven, that they began to write down and remember what he'd said. And of course, if we'd been in the presence of Jesus himself and we'd heard him talking, such was the, the clarity and, and the beauty and the sense of what he was saying that people could remember almost word for word what he'd said. And of course, Jesus talked a lot about his death, about his suffering, um, about the cross, about what it meant that he'd come down from heaven to earth to try to explain how us human beings could live a life that's worthy of being called human. He came to explain something about the overwhelming power all-consuming love that God has for every single human being. And Jesus knew that he was going to have to express that in, in some way that people really would know just absolutely how much he loved them. And we're so used to the fact that we know the story that we sort of take it for granted that Jesus ended up dying on the cross. But it was a heroic journey he made we're here in the Gospel as he sets his face for Jerusalem and goes for those final weeks and days that lead him 
to his earthly death. What he tried to prepare the disciples for, that he is not a leader, Jesus is not a, a guru or a, a, a religious figure who is the same as any other religious figure that has ever existed. Because the, Jesus wanted them to see there's no way that by following him they were going to be protected from all the things that life was going to throw at them. He wanted them to see the opposite was true. That to be a follower of his meant, in our own way, sharing his sacrificial life on earth, so that as a Christian, it would not just be a transforming experience for us as individuals, but it would have an effect on those around us. That when we become a follower of Jesus, we take up our cross, we share in his pilgrimage, his vocation. Our lives are changed, and by that ripple effect, the lives of others around us are changed. Because to be a Christian, a committed Christian, someone who has declared themselves for Christ, means that we actually do, with the Lord himself, become epicenters of love. And that that love flows out from us and to other people, into our families, into our communities, into our lives. And why does that happen? How does that happen to us? How is it possible? Well, as Jesus says to Peter, it's because we have to think not in the way of the secular world, but we have to think in a new way. And the way that we begin to think in a new way is because we begin to see in a new way. And if you have Jesus in your life, if you listen to his words by reading scripture, if you share in the beauty of worship, if you consciously bring yourself into sacred space, and, to, and into holy places, if you constant, consciously try to, to have godly conversations uh, and, and a relationship with other Christians, then the way we see life does begin to change. We see that at the heart and centre of everything is God's love. And although we won't be protected from all the things that life throws at us, we are able to deal with them, to cope with them, in a new and different way. Now the secular world comes up with logos like the Nike tick. Success, you know, getting it, getting it right. Um, all that goes with that sort of advertising bias towards being successful and, and, and wealthy and all those other things. But although those first Christians at first couldn't bring themselves to use the cross as their symbol, as their sign, gradually as they began to understand and talk about and pray through and share together with what Jesus had said while he was here on earth, they began to see that the cross is at the centre of all that has meaning and all that has value. I might have said to this before, but it's all worth saying for those who never heard it. When I was uh, a boy, went to church, I think I have told you this, the vicar said to us, when we came to make our communion, we made the sign of the cross. And he said, because what you're doing is, you're making it nigh, and you're crossing it out, and putting Jesus in place. Never forgot that. And that's what being a Christian is about that it is not me and all my wants and needs and demands and self-absorptions and all the rest of it. Ultimately, it's not me that matters. It is Jesus. Because what Jesus does, he releases inside of me all that is good and true and, and honest and right, the real person that I know inside. And I believe that without Jesus, it's very difficult, very difficult indeed, for the real me to be able to express itself and be lived out and make the most of this our earthly life. 
Now, I say all that particularly to those of you to be confirmed, because we are excited as a Christian community here. The church itself is excited. The angels themselves are excited. Jesus himself is excited that you've come to that moment in your earthly journey where you recognise with us that in order to make the most of the time that we have on earth, to walk with the Lord, to see life through his eyes, to share together with the pilgrim people of God the journey of love, that is a transforming thing. It is the gift, it is the treasure, it is at the heart of all that has true meaning in life. So those words from the Gospel today are so pertinent to our worship. Those of you who know me well know that I can talk forever. And I would love to just go on telling you about all the wonderful things of God. But I know particularly those who confirmed are thinking, now it's time. Let's get on with it. I'm going to lay my hands on your head. I'm going to touch your foreheads with the holy oil of prison. I'm going to call down the Holy Spirit upon you. And today is the first day of the rest of your lives, as proudly you call yourself Christian and know the Lord as your friend, as your saviour, as the one who gave everything, even to dying on the cross, that you might share eternal life now and for always. Amen. Now we've got our separate sheet for the confirmation and on page <coughs> two, so I'm going to ask uh, our three confirmands, if you'd like, the three of you would like to stand, to stay where you are in your place. I'm going to ask you some questions first. So first of all, have you been baptised in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Amen. So I say to everyone here, faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome these candidates and uphold them in their life in Christ? <laughs> Baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life in him. Therefore, to those to be confirmed, I ask you these questions. Do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Amen. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Amen. Do you repent of the sin that separates us from God and neighbour? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life. Like everyone, please to stand. And so, my brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together with these candidates the faith of the church. So I say to us all, do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died on the third day, was he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of God, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? Symbol that we are the 
baptised people of God. Just a little bit of holy water, baptismal water. To remind ourselves of that great moment when we were baptised and our assurance of taking our place in the kingdom of heaven will happen. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation will be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So would everyone please be seated. This is the moment where normally we'd sing the great hymn, Come Holy Spirit, Come Holy Ghost, Our Souls Inspire, as we ask God to send his Spirit upon our candidates and upon us and upon the whole church. I don't need to say that these are, are difficult times for us all, uh, and there's that underlying anxiety uh, in our lives. So for a moment I'd like us just to be still and to be quiet and to think of God's Holy Spirit coming down upon each and every one of us. Let it be like early morning dew that rests upon us. Let it saturate us. Let God's Spirit be his abiding love, entering even into our very souls. And just Feel together, understand that all is well, experience that calm that can only come from being in the presence of God, and to know that God is constantly renewing us in our lives and in our faith. And also, for a moment, just in the silence, to think of those others who are special to us and whom we love, who particularly need our prayers and God's calming, healing peace. So now the privilege of God's Holy Spirit to descend upon our candidates and upon each and every one of us. So I say to us all, our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given these your servants new birth in baptism by water and the Spirit, and have forgiven them all their sins. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and inward strength. Spirit of knowledge and true godliness. Amen. And let their delight be in the fear of the Lord. by name and made you his own. Confirm, O Lord, your 
servant Paula, with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Paula, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Shame, God has called you by name and made you his own gift. Confirm, O Lord, your servant shame with your Holy Spirit. Oh, Amen. Shame, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Graham, God has called you by name and made you his own. Confirm, O Lord, your servant Graham with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Graham, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. So let us pray together. Defend, O Lord, these your servants with your heavenly grace, that they may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until they come to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. So I'll put three standard candidates, please stand up. And if you swim around so everyone can see you, so my brothers and sisters, I present to you our newly confirmed members of God's Holy Church. Show the love of Christ to the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray for the help of the Holy Spirit to eliminate in our lives the grumbling and complaining attitudes towards others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for Paula, Shane, and Graham confirmed today. May their strength and faith be always a source of joy to them and a guide to their actions for the rest of their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. Let us pray for 
their diamond wedding today. May the life they have shared for 60 years be a sign to them and others of God's abiding love for his children. Lord, hear us. Lord, praise us. Let us pray for all those who are imprisoned and tortured for following the dictates of their conscience, that they may be strengthened and comforted. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord praise us. Let us pray for an end to hostility, violence and war, and a real longing for the ways of peace and love, especially in areas of crisis in our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, hear us. Let us pray for all who are sick and for their families, that Christ may touch them with his healing power, especially Joan Hill, Nicola Berry, Michael Denny, Billy Carter, Jessica Mercer, Janet Wollstone, and all prayed for at Shrine Prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Let us pray for those who have died, that they may experience everlasting life, especially Amanda Varley, Edric Tasker, Mary Clements, Marjorie Payne, Elsie Gray, Emma Tyler, Peter Clements, Ethel Marner, Ernest Lawton, Annie Old, Pauline Potter, Jeffrey Elliott, Susanna Wilde, Ida Davis, Grimwood Diaz, Stanley Tite, Doreen Stannard, and Vera Diaz, whose anniversary is on this week. Lord hear us. Lord gracious us. Mary was redeemed and glorified through suffering. <coughs> Let us ask her prayers. In our need. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we, we ask you to teach us your ways, and when this involves pain and suffering, Give, Give us the courage to follow you to the end. We ask this of you who live to pray for heaven and death. Amen. Now we're going to the offertory of the Mass. Can I just say, those of you who will receive the communion, please follow the instructions of the church wardens. If you want a blessing, please come and cross your hands like that, and we'll give you God's blessing. If you rather sit in your seat, that's quite all right. Just do whatever is comfortable for you. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands it may, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual good. Blessed are you, Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, that my sacrifice of yours may be accepted, Lord God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord is the name. For the Lord Lord, may this holy offering bring us your blessing and accomplish within us its promise of salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is your life giving thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by his birth we are reborn. In his suffering we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead we rise to everlasting life. In his return to his glory, we enter into our heavenly kingdom. And so we join the angels and saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father, you are holy in me, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring these gifts, we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate the Jews on the night he was betrayed into your bread, and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my wine, which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, calling to mind the death of the Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension to heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favour on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may the sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance of peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, the ecumenical patriarch of Holland, our Bishop Norman here present and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people, your son is getting for you. 
Father, hear the prayers of the family. You gathered here before. Strengthen Paula, Shane, and Gray, who have now become your people with the waters of rebirth and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help them to walk in newness of love. Immerse in love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom and a part of brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray for the coming of the kingdom of God and our part to bring that kingdom of God. In the words of Jesus has taught us, our fathers, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. And protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Kingdom, power, and glory of us. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Lord, not on our sin. Grant the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please offer each other some sign of unity. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Let us this world. sons of God, happy are they who suffer persecution for justice. The kingdom of heaven is theirs.
We hope that Henry for the Lord. And Mary for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my woman. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made man. And Mary for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my woman. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. We beseech you, Lord, for your grace in our hearts, and as we know, the incarnation of your Son, our Lord Jesus, the message of angel, so for his passion and cross. We may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit down, I'll just go through the notices. Um, now, at the end of this service, um, I think perhaps Bishop Norton and I will go to North Rico as we've got staying for like refreshments and very important to bring our own because of the situation we're in. Um, then we'll have a photograph at the altar, a high altar for the candidates.